service this morning. May God bless you for coming. Amen. want to also appreciate our internet audience. We are the Apostolic Faith Church at 13 Penny Road in Bexley. Our postcode is DA53EP. You're more than welcome to attend in person if you live close by or if you happen to be visiting. To, we also want to appreciate those that started for us. We had uh, the orchestration, once more, oh Lord, we pray from our choir and orchestra. And then we also had the choir giving us, it is marvelous and wonderful by Leila N. Morris. And then we had the last quartet, Sweet, Sweet Holy Spirit by Doris Akers. We are going to be singing together from uh, CGS and our first song is going to be Number 25, CGS 25.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. We sing again from the same hymn book, in 700. We praise thee, O Lord. 700. We sing verses 1 and 4. 1 and 4. the church Amen. and revive every one of us. Amen. We sing uh, the same uh, from the same hymn book 109, 109. Oh, for our faith that will not shrink, Amen. though pressed by every foe, Amen. for in the hour of grief or pain we lean upon its uh, God. We sing all the three verses and the, the organ will give us um, tunes. We are going to use them um, uh, three tunes, so let us listen to the organist as we sing each verse. <laughs> such faith. Amen. We want to sing a chorus, God will make a way. Amen. May God make that way in your life Amen. and in my life too. Amen. We sing uh, verses 1 and 2.
Amen. We sing again another chorus. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. After the introduction. Whatever helmet you brought here this morning, forget about it. Amen. Just give thanks to the Lord. Amen. We sing again, Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. Are we ready to lift the name of the Lord on high? Yes. Let's sing. Here we go. Lord, I Song five two three. CGS five two three. We sing the last verse of this song standing, and we shall remain standing to be led in prayer. Storm, do not alarm me. Absolutely. Do they alarm you? No. no. God bless you.
As we remain standing, Brother David, would you come forward and pray for us? Let us pray. God, our Father, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, we come unto you again today. We thank you. We started this year like a few days ago when we were saying Happy New Year. It's almost a whole month now. Oh God Almighty, how we praise thee. Blessed is the name of the Lord. We just sang Hallelujah, thine the glory. Storms, they will not alarm us anymore because we continually depend on thee. Oh God Almighty, today, it's this devotional service, we want your Holy Spirit yes. to come down in a mighty way. Yes. Oh God Almighty, let your Holy Spirit talk to us. Yes. You know, those ears of our hearts, Father, let your Holy Spirit open them. Yes. So your word will come straight in. Yes. Give unction from above. Yes to the person that's going to be te- preaching to this morning. Amen. Oh God Almighty, those on the internet, Father, we want your blessings Amen. to even reach them. Amen. Our brethren, wherever they are, Amen. Father, manifest in a mighty Amen. way. We don't want to just come and live the same way. Amen. Instead, we want to come and live blessed. Amen. We know your second coming is imminent. Amen. It's been repeated a few times, but we know signs are showing us that it is soon. Father, make us ready. We've had devotionals and prayers throughout this whole um, month, revival prayers. Father, let our souls be revived. Bless us all. Answer our prayers. The rest of the service we commit to your hands. Take full control. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to our devotional service. We appreciate your presence and may God bless you. At 2.30 today, we're going to be having Y4C. It's titled Dream Big. For our young people, I would encourage all of you to join online to that event at 2.30. And then at uh, 5 p.m., we'll have combined virtual prayer meeting. And then on Monday, we have a prayer meeting at 7.30. This will be the last of our January daily prayers. So if you have missed some of them, you want to take opportunity to join the last one. And I'm sure God will do us good when we do that. On Wednesday, we are not going to have any uh, activity. And then on Friday, we have virtual prayer meeting at 8 p.m. Saturday, we will revert back to our morning prayers between 8 and 10 a.m. Next Sunday, if Jesus tarries, we have Sunday school for all ages at 10 a.m. Devotional service is we are having now at 11.15 and then in the evening at 5, we will have combined uh, virtual prayer meeting. There will be a God's Love Day event titled Love Saved in Action on the 13th of February, and it's organized by our welfare team. And this is a follow-on on last year's event themed Recipe of Love. You are all encouraged to fill in an anonymous online questionnaire that will be sent to you. I believe that has already been sent out because I saw one. Uh, Please note that the deadline to fill out that uh, anonymous uh, questionnaire is the 10th of uh, February. It's very short. I had a look at it. And I believe you will take less than maybe two minutes to do that. Uh, The welfare team would like all of us to uh, take part in that and it will help inform the event that they will have with us on the day. Now, they are also requesting that we give them free donations of brand new 
or unused items such as clothing, children's toys, books or Bibles, household items, and any functional things that may be useful to our members. So what they're trying to say is, if you want to share anything, please make sure it's something that is worthwhile to give to someone. Uh, they're asking for your prayers for the success of the event. Now we'll continue our service. We'll listen to the first special that is t uh, titled Keeping on Believing and that's uh, written by Frank C. Houston. And then after that uh, first special, we're going to have scripture reading from Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, and then we skip and read Second Chronicles 7, 12 to 16. Um, the last special will be Pray Until God's Sunshine Will Shine Its Way Through, by Sister Emma, and is written by her. And then we have the word of exhortation after that.
for our scripture reading this morning. We're taking it from two parts, but all from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, and then we'll have a break and go to verses 12 to 16. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Two, and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. Three, and when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Go to verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. 13. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 15. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. 16, the last verse. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Sunshine. 
Dance and victory. Prayer, open, close door to those that are oppressed. Prayer will break the chains. You'll find grace and favor. Pray till something happens. Heaven's joys fill your soul. Pray, always pray. Pray, always pray. Pray until the sunshine will find its way through. Pray in the morning. Going back to Second Chronicles, I want us to start from chapter six. Verse twelve. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scarf fold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set in the midst of the court and upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees and before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. We want to thank God for the month that he has given us to this day when he set it upon our hearts to be praying. We have a very good example here of what happened in Israel way back after the temple had been built and Israel was happy as a nation being led by Solomon then, David had just passed on. It was upon the heart of David to have built uh, the temple for him, but uh, God said he would not do it. It ended up being Solomon, his son, building the temple for God. Before this time, the ark had always been in the tent, and now it was time for them to bring the ark of God into the temple that they had built for God. When they did that. It was a great ceremony. Amen. And Solomon was leading Israel in that uh, uh, event. Now we see here, he went before the whole congregation and he prayed. And his prayer covered a number of aspects. You look at it from, uh, he started saying, there is no other God than the God of Israel. Verse 14, and he said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven nor in earth, which keepest covenant and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. 
that, that's what God does. Yes. When we love him with all our heart, God will show his mercy yes. toward us. And he was reflecting on what his father had done, how he walked before God in a way that pleased God to the extent that God would say he was a man after his own heart. Now, he went on to explain that he knew that his father had longed to build God a house, but God would not let him do so because he was a man of war. Now, it pleased God that the house was going to be built by Solomon. And then he prayed that God had allowed him to do that, thanking God for that occasion, that he had helped him. He had given him the grace to follow through the plan that his father had. Now, in his prayer, he went on to say a few things that we may want to learn, that when we pray, God desires that we pray that way. He asked in verse 19, have respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee. When we acknowledge who God is, yeah. we have the confidence to say, God, please answer my prayer. Yes. Because our God answers prayers. Yes. Solomon went on to say that the eyes of the Lord were supposed to be upon the temple that they had built. He requested that God would always keep his eye upon that house. Now you remember we, this verse, this, this, or this, this verses normally, we read them out when we dedicate a church or that, that has been built. But I want us to learn something from that. Besides the fact that this was a dedicatory prayer to the temple, we also need to know that he desired that people, when they come to that house of prayer, that God's eyes will be upon it. There is every privilege that we have to pray in the house of God. Very important. That's why we reverence our places of worship. They are important. We, we, we know the presence of God is there all the time. Yes. People come with issues in this house. Yes. And they, 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 they want the presence of God to be there all the time. Yes. And when they pray, they believe that God will hear them for his presence is always here. Yes. He asked God to listen to his supplication. Verse 21. Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall make toward this house. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven. When thou hearest, forgive. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. That, that's, this is, in other words, the church is a place where souls come to be saved. Yeah. It's a soul-saving station. Yes. This place, the only business that we have in this place is to seek the face of God. Yes. And God demands that we find him yes. before we leave this place. Yes. He demands that we find him. It's very important to know that prayer is, is, is the life of a Christian. Yes. For anyone to have a successful Christian life, you, we need to wholly depend upon this God of Israel. Yeah. And there is 
for God to answer our prayers, there is always a condition. The condition is we live the life that pleases him. If we have sinned, there is a remedy for sin, the blood of Jesus. And when we pray, acknowledging our sin, God will answer our prayers. Verse 22. If a man sin against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and do and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. God is the righteous judge. And he demands justice for all. We pray that God will help us to understand that God answers prayer. Amen. Solomon did not end there. He had quite a number of things that he said in his prayer. He went on to say, if heaven be shut. Well, there are times when we have droughts. We don't pray for one. But when it happens, Israel had a formula. When it rains. It's not because uh, there was a weather forecast that said it was going to rain. Uh, God bless our weather forecasters, Amen. but they can only focus what God is going to do. Yes. May God help us. Amen. So we need to know who commands yeah. things to happen. Right. So Israel was told, when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned, See, one of the conditions that God may, cause, God may cause it not to rain is sin. Yeah. When people sin, God is not happy with them. And he knows where to, you know, that, well, there are times when we say when you want to probably discipline a child, you can withdraw their privileges. And then, they, this is one way of God dealing with us. He, at times he withdraws our privileges. And then when, when he does so, he just wants us to, uh, to recognize him. He wants us to acknowledge him. And he said, when he has done that, then, yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven Amen. and forgive the sin of thy servants. Amen. And of the people of Israel, Amen. when thou hast taught them the good way. So God teaches us the good yes. way. Yes. There, there are bad ways, but we thank God for the good way. Amen. And the good way is the way of the cross. Yes. Anyone that walks in that way will make heaven at last. Amen. It was Jesus who said, take up your cross and follow me. Yes. It's the way of the cross. Yes. We need to pick up our cross, follow him. And he will take us to heaven at last. Amen. If there be any death in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting, mild you, locusts, caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, when they pray, God must hear them. Amen. That's what Solomon was saying. So we, we have a way out yeah. of our troubles. Yeah. And that way out is prayer. Amen. What is prayer? Some may ask. Simply communicating with God. And as we do so, it's a two-way communication. When we speak, God hears. And then God also speaks and we must listen and do what he tells us to do. And prayer must be prayed always. Yes. We don't faint when we pray. And there are many types of prayer, but today we're just looking at prayer in general. There is prayer for, of supplication, intercessory prayer, thanksgiving prayer, prayer of praise, but we're just looking at prayer in general. Prayer for Christians enjoy their pilgrimage. They do. 
If you want to have peace on this way, love to pray. There is no other way. We cannot help each other. Well, we encourage each other, but we only go thus far. The rest of the way is between me and God. And that is walked by prayer. God will help us to do that. So we should love to pray. It is work again. Prayer is not easy because it is work and it demands our energy. <laughs> Glory be to God. I believe God will help us to do that. Um, we have confidence that when we pray in spirit and in truth, God will answer our prayers. In uh, Luke 1, 36 and 37, or we can just take 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Well, there are things that are impossible with men, but not with God. Our God can do anything. Those who have prayed and had God answer their prayers, they will know that God does the impossible. Yes. He is God that turned water into wine. Yes. For those that did chemistry, water is H2O. Then in wine, there is carbon there. So the, the, the chemical structure of wine has got carbon in it. How could there be carbon where there was no carbon? May, may God help us. God does wonders. He made the blind to see. Yes. And he made the lepers to have no leprosy. Amen. And leprosy was known as a contagious disease that could not be healed. And we have COVID. Many have been healed of it. Amen. Though it caused the world to come on its knees, yeah. God still heals. Yes. In Isaiah 55, 6, we are told, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him. While he is near, all prayers can be prayed, but there is one most important prayer. That is of our reconciliation with God. Yeah. Everyone has to seek the face of God yeah. while, he can, while he may be found, yeah. which means the door of mercy will be shut at some point. But we want to do the best that we can to reach out to God and pray that God will help us. Pray. Yeah. That God will save us. Amen. says, let the, uh, the wicked forsake his way. Yeah. Uh, you have to acknowledge that you're a sinner. And if you acknowledge, God will help you to come out of it. Yes. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. Amen. God is merciful. Yes. To anyone that acknowledges his mercy and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God, God doesn't mind what you did. Men might do, but God doesn't. He, he, all our sins were nailed to the cross with Jesus. That's why when he was there on the cross, uh, God could not face him. And he was saying, my father, why have thou forsaken me? Because the sin of the world was upon him. God is righteous and holy, yeah. and he cannot tolerate sin. Yeah. But Christ became our ransom for our sin. So anyone that comes to God through faith in Jesus Christ can be saved. Yeah. Because salvation gives us eternal life. Yeah. And when God answers that prayer, we also have the promise that um, in Acts 2.21, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Whosoever, it means anyone. Yes. So you and I are included in the whosoever. Yes. You can call on Jesus and you can be saved from your life of sin. God wants us to be holy. We can pray that prayer again by way of consecration and he will make us holy. Yes. And we want to be qualified for heaven. Yes. In First Thessalonians 4, 
3 to 5, he says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. It is God's will that we be sanctified, that he should abstain from fornication. God hates it. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor, not in lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. There is a way of those that, that, those that do not know God walk in. It's a broad way. But God wants us to walk on the narrow way that leads to eternal life. May God bless you. Well, the Holy Ghost baptism is a must. When we pray, as the disciples did in the upper room, Jesus told them, Stay in Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. They waited. They tarried. I always say it's something like they, they, they did not know they were going to wait for 10 days. But they tarried. They waited. They were praying up there. And when the final moment was come, when that moment came, they heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind came down upon them, cloven tongues of fire, and they were heard speaking with other languages as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. The power of God was upon them. And Peter stood up and proclaimed, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. He prophesied that the Spirit of God was going to come upon them. And when the Spirit of God was upon them, well, they could do great exploits for Jesus. We need that power in our day to day. And I pray that God helps us to pray. For it is prayer that moves the hand of God on our behalf. It achieves the impossible. It makes the Jerichos, our spiritual Jerichos, to come down. It it makes the sick to be healed. And prayer can make the dead to rise again. It quickens the dead spiritually to life. And prayer makes rivers and deserts. It makes the barren to conceive. It makes sinners saints. Prayers makes the saved to be sanctified. And prayers makes those who have been sanctified to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. It makes, may may God help us. It preserves us holy. And it makes the enemy to tremble. And it gives us victory on every challenge. That's what prayers does. It it, it is the spiritual lifeline of a Christian. Have you ever seen people being winched by helicopter out of any occasion or incidents? When they have that winch coming to them, they hold on to it. Would you think they hold lightly? They hold tightly to it. Prayer is like that to every Christian. We hold tightly to prayer. And we know that when we do so, God will answer our every prayer. Jacob wrestled until the break of day. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And when the daybreak came, we know the angel caught him on his side and he was disfigured. He had a mark of prayer. And God answered his prayer. Said, what is your name? And he said, you will not be Jacob anymore, but you shall be called Israel. So a nation was born through prayer. Glory be to God. God did wonders when Abraham prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah, not to be destroyed. God did something great. He heard that prayer. He started, if there be 50 people, will you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And he counted down to 10. There were not even 10 people in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why it was destroyed. But Lot and his wife and his children had an opportunity to be rescued from that. God answers prayer. We read about Solomon's dedication prayer. And I want us to end by reading uh, from chapter 7. 
where we had our scripture reading. Uh, if you want, you can read the whole of uh, chapter 6 of Second Chronicles. You see a lot of what Solomon said when he was praying to God. Now, in verse 7, he said, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, that was his answer to his prayer. The fire came down from heaven. Yeah. You know, they, they had many sacrifices. Mm. The number of the sacrifices that they made as they were moving the ark to the temple could not be numbered. So they had sacrifices and the fire came down and bent off the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the priests could not enter into the house. Just before that, you'll find the priests and the Levites were actually pl playing trumpets and singing. Yeah. And when they did that, the glory of the Lord came down yeah. and filled the house. They could not minister. Mm -hmm. Now God appeared mm -hmm. in this way. God can still do the same yeah. in our time, you know. Yeah. Verse 2. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good. Amen. For his mercy endureth forever. Well, verse 12 you will see, after this incident, they remained in that place for more than 21 days, still praising God, sacrificing to God, and God was happy with them, and then God appeared to Solomon in verse 12. And he told him by night and said, I have heard thy prayer. Yes. I have chosen this place unto myself for an house of sacrifice. God can answer your prayer today. Whatever you have been looking unto God for, whatever you have been praying for, take hold of God's opportunity for you today and pray that God will answer all your prayers. God is more than ready to answer our prayers. But who is there that will say, God, here am I? We have closing song and the altars are open. You can come forward and pray.
thank you, our God. You are the God that hears and answers prayers. We bear testimonies to your faithfulness, oh God. We have tried and tested you. And we can say, oh Lord God, that yes, indeed, you are the Savior of mankind. That you save from sin. That you sanctify. And that you baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. We are testimonies, oh Lord God, of what you have done and what you can do. We're asking, oh God, that this afternoon, as we bow before you, do it again. Oh Lord, save once more. Sanctify, oh Lord. Fill with Holy Ghost and fire. Lord, deliver. Heal the sick, oh God. And send us home with joy and rejoicing. Thank you for answered prayers, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.